Okay, this is hard to see, but you see the little bitty hole? That's my actual, that's my finger next to it. And I'm looking through a 20 power loop, a uh, jeweler's loop. So and you can, again, you can just barely see right there. As small as that is, when you get a paint job that's damn near perfect, uh, put enough clear on it, you block it. It's really hard to see, but this paint job is very straight. Reflections are perfect. I mean, you could read the letter on the uh, light bulbs up there, but that's a huge area to do and not get a speck of dust or something. So that is what I've got there. You really can't even see it with your naked eye. I can see it right there because I've already dug it out a little. There was a little flake of something, who knows. So what I did is I took a needle, looked through the loop, you, tr you just can't do it with your naked eye, but it, it stands out. When everything is so perfect, it just stands out. And like I said, I want to try to make these things look as good as possible. So I took a needle. I actually had to sharpen the needle on some 1500 grit paper because the needle was too fat, the tip of it, as weird as that sounds, it is. But that's how you can fix those little defects. I just kind of because I've got clear and base on here. The little black speck must have been in the, probably in the top coat. So I just scrape it out. And then I actually go mix up some, uh, I actually mixed up just a hair, uh, a base coat. I'm talking like four drops. And a drop, if you let a drip come off something, that's probably about 50 times too much. It takes, it's as small as the head of a pen, but it's, like I say, it stands out. So I did that, and then I'll put, uh, if I don't go through the clear and the color's still good, I'll just take a little bit of um, clear and, you, and literally mix four drops and one drop. And again, that's way too much, but you got to do it. And then I'll just touch that in there and you can't even use a drop. A drop spreads out, it's so big. I did the same thing. I took a little piece of plastic, filed the tip down where it's as big as the head of a pen and then just barely touch it. And it'll leave a, um, like a little mountain, a little mohill on it if you're looking through it. Come back, sand that down level, buff it off. I had one over here. Trying to find where they were at. It's in that reflection. It's right there. You can just barely see a little bit of deflection in the light. You can absolutely cannot see that with your naked eye. Nobody can find it in here. I know where it's at, but that's it. So I just want to show you that you can do that. Take a needle, get a loop. You can't do it with your naked eye. Take those little defects out. That's the advantage of using the base and hard uh, base coat uh, and uh, the hardeners and things. You can just pop it right back in. I could have taken just a little bit of touch up paint and just put the thing on top. It was a it was an issue stone chip stone chip whatever but at this point i've got time and i can make it look right i actually can put a little bit of drop of hardener in that i'll leave it overnight i'll buff it off you'll never see it tomorrow so now what that means is i can actually get started on the frame uh got a lot more of my stuff in got the brakes uh you know I rebuilt mine and uh ended up taking 
all that other crap back. Couldn't find anything. They either were the wrong side, wouldn't work, all kinds of issues. Uh, you know, I ended up rebuilding mine. They seem, seem to be fine. So we're just gonna go with that. But I've got the, the A-arms, everything. Uh, went and bought all the parts I need. All the lines are here. So I will start putting this frame together. Everything, all my parts have already been sandblasted, uh, put in black epoxy and ready to go. And like I said, all I'm gonna do with the car is uh, I'll cover it up, put it back in the corner now and build the frame, rear end's ready. And then I can pretty much just build the car. But after you put a little bit of uh, clear in, get you some, uh, and it, then you really have to be careful. I'll use uh, 2,000, 2,500, uh, and just barely, barely rub it. One thing you have to be careful about, go ahead and take you a little bit of a paint stick, of a, a small stick, wrap you some paper around that. I bought a bunch of these. They're perfect, they're like tongue depressors. And I use those for mixing small amounts of paint rather than, you know, rather than big mixing sticks. I just bought bags or bags of tongue compressors and, and use those. You can get them at uh, Hobby Lobby, any store like that. But I'll just break off a little bitty one inch piece, put my paper around it, keep it flat because when you're getting this detailed, just rubbing your finger in one spot with a little paper will change the reflection of the light bulb. Instead of being perfectly straight, like you can look at this down through here, you'll see, see that right there? You can see, just barely see that straightness turn a little curve. I mean, it's, it's so hard to see. You can kind of see it right there. Straightness of the reflection kind of curves a little. Um, that'll buff out because I was just actually trying to get the trash out of there. But hit that with the um, 2000, 2500, and then just buff it with the um, red pad and the uh, coarse stuff. They'll take it down pretty quick. That's about the only tip I've got today. So we'll get uh, we'll get started on the frame here. It'll take me a while. I just got to sort out all the parts. Got to press in bushings. Uh, you know, you know what it takes. So we'll get started on that stuff here pretty soon. But that's where the paint is. I'm actually going to be done painting for a while until uh, probably until spring. Uh, I got bored yesterday and I actually had a, oh, sorry, I had a shaker that had got broke back here. So I was bored and I just went ahead and thought, yeah, it's going to be one of those things I can fix real quick and somebody can use it. But had a chunk broke out. I just laid some tape and cardboard across here and um, use that for a mold and you know, I'll sand it down smooth, but this is just, that's just the uh, Duraglass, I'm sorry, Duraglass. It's got the fiber already in it. Um, they'll be strong enough. Like I say, these things are getting up to people wanting a couple hundred bucks for them. So give this one to somebody that can use it and um, hopefully it'll work fine. That's it. I really got nothing else. We'll talk to you later.